Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 24 by 24 garage floor that slope two and a half inches from the back towards the front. A lot of the garages we pour here in Maine are sloped like this without floor drains. They just slope them right out the front. So if you get any water on the floor, it tends to want to run out the door. Now what we're doing today, I was hired here just to do the pouring and the finishing. So we're going to pour this, get it all, get it all poured and both loaded. Then we're going to uh, power trial it nice and smooth after. I've just got the pouring in the video to show you how we pour floors that are sloped like this. I didn't do any of the prep. The prep here is the, there's four inches of styrofoam, there's wire mesh, they put a little bit of rebar in there and they got a 2 by 10 going across the garage door. Now somebody else, the building contractor did all that stuff for us, got it all ready for us. There's actually a big house to this too that you can't see in the background. Uh, so they got a pretty big house and garage going in here. Now what we're doing is we're pouring 4,000 PSI concrete. I got a high range water reducer in it. What the water reducer does is it allows us to pour a, a looser slump without affecting the strength of the concrete. So we got about a seven inch slump here we can pour with a high range water reducer. It just it does a couple things. Number one, it helps us you know, put the, put the slab in a lot faster, a lot easier. And then it, it allows us to not use quite as much water in the mix, which helps keep the concrete strong. And it just makes for a little bit easier pour here for us. We also got 140 degree hot water that was in the water tank and you know by the time they mix that in the concrete the concrete comes out at about 75 degrees so we got pretty warm concrete today and we're using an accelerator too as you saw in the beginning it's really cold this morning 15 degrees so it's it's not going to dry very good once we get it once we get it laid out it's also a five inch thick concrete floor uh, typically most garages we pour like this are four inches inside a frost wall but they just wanted a little bit extra thickness in this and you can see how thick it is in the front it's almost a foot thick in the front because that's a 2 by 10 they're using down there we got two trucks coming we got 11 and a half yards make sure you stay to the end of the video we have a little entryway we're pouring too and it was kind of difficult to reach so you'll be able to see how we how we had to reach that entryway we couldn't back the truck right up to it we're going to get this first truck dumped right out, get him out of the way so he can wash his chutes, and then we can pull that second truck in. But if this is your first time watching me, you know, I put out videos every week about concrete, trying to help and teach you guys that want to learn about concrete just how we do things, how we run our business here. We do, we pour concrete just about every single day. That's what we specialize in, pouring and finishing concrete. Um, we don't do the demo. We don't, we don't do a lot of the excavation at all. We, I just hire that out if I need to, and we make money pouring concrete. That's what our specialty is, and that's my business, and that's what I've done for 40 years. So, you know, you can, if you just want to pour concrete, you can make a business out of it and make money at it, um, contrary to what a lot of other guys think out there. You can be real successful at it. So we, that's what we do. Now we get the first truck dumped out. We like to get it dumped right out and get it out of the way, like I said. Get him going, get him back to the concrete plant so they can send him somewhere else. And then once we get that dumped out, we, we're we gonna float our edges in, get those all nice and smooth. Now Darren's in the background there, he's floating his edge to a chalk line that we have shot. And then Luke right here on the left is floating right to the top of the wall. We'll get those all smooth and then I'm going to, I got that laser set up that you can't see, it's over to the left, but I'm going to use my laser and I'm going to get my grade in the middle. My grade in the middle is going to be an inch and a quarter lower than the top of that concrete wall. And then where the board is there in the front, where the garage doors are, that's two and a half inches lower than the top of the concrete wall. So we're going to have a nice even slope right out the front. And even at this slump, like a seven inch slump, it's pretty easy to slope the concrete over that amount of area without it sagging at all. As you'll see here in a minute when we go to screed this. Now I'm just double checking my grades, shooting top of wall, shooting top of form, and then I'm splitting the difference to get my inch and a quarter lower in the middle. And then we're gonna wet pad that, we call that a wet pad. 
If you guys want to check out my private membership, The Concrete Underground, that, I'll have a link for that in the description below where I have all kinds of training videos to show you how to do concrete like we do. Stamp concrete, uh, floors, pool decks, patios, room finish, repair, all kinds of stuff is in that Concrete Underground to teach you guys how to do, how to do concrete just like we do. So it was a little bit low there in the middle. The guys had to pull me up some extra concrete so I could make this pad. And then I use my laser, like I said, to make sure it's right at the perfect height. And then when it's ready, when the pad's right where I need it, I put an X on it, circle it. That tells everybody, don't step there, <laughs> or I'll have to do it again. And then we just, we call this striking a pad for us. So we strike this center pad and this is how we do it. This is how we screed. We call it wet screeding. Some guys will put a 2x4 here and they'll screed from the 2x4 and, and that's perfectly fine too. But we just were taught to wet screed and that's how we do it. And you can see how Luke is kind of, we call it, he's on the outside, the one the orange. He's on the outside of the pad and Darren's on the inside and he's kicking as he's screeding. And we could use, we could use our power screed here if we really wanted to. We just, you know, a lot of times the guys will decide on a smaller, a smaller floor like this that they'll just hand screed it. Um, it's for us, it's actually just as fast. On a bigger floor, we would have pulled out the power screed here today. So that's a bay. We call that a bay. That's about a 12 by 12 bay. Now we're coming down this other bay, and you can see how in sync those guys are when they screed. They've all been doing it a real long time. Darren there has been doing it 25 years. Luke's almost 20. You know, I'm going on 40 years doing this. Um, and that's being in business for 40 years for me. So through good times, through bad times. And you just, you just don't survive that long if you don't do a good job and know what you're doing. So there's those two bays poured. That first truck dumped right out. It took about three minutes to screed those two bays. And now I'm going to go over it with a bow float, get it smoothed out. And I like, when I bow float stuff, I like going nice and easy and making sure that I get all the aggregate pushed down and some of the cream, some of the paste pulled up to the top and get a nice bow float finished surface without the lines on the edges of the bow float digging in. So I, I just take my time, I go nice and easy. We're waiting for that second truck to still mix. So there's really no hurry here, although it is really cold, we'd kind of like to get this in, get back in the truck so we can warm up. But that's basically how we bow float after we screed. We try to, we try to bow float perpendicular to the way we screed, um, and not in the same direction as the way we screed, but sometimes, you know, just the environment keeps you from doing that. It just helps, it helps even flatten the floor even more where you screed it if you can go perpendicular like this. Although Darren and Luke, when they screed, they get they get a really flat floor. There's never really any dump, uh, humps or dips underneath where they screed. It's always really good. So the guy mixing the second truck, I mean, normally we like to have him all mixed up and ready to go as soon as we get done screeding. We like to back him right in and, and get him right to where we need him and start dumping so there's no weight like this. But uh, he's, he got it pretty close for us. So again, he's got the same thing, 4,000. He's got about 75 degree concrete, high range water reducer. And we got about a, he was a little bit dry. He was about a six slump, slump probably. He wasn't quite as loose as the first truck. But we're gonna just get him all dumped out, fill that in. It looks like, it kind of looks like the first truck did, did almost three quarters of it, and the second truck's going to only do a quarter, but that second, that last piece that we're standing is really, really thick. And then we still have that little piece in the back that you're going to, you're going to check out here a little bit later that we're going to do. So we needed, we needed uh, enough concrete to do all, all, both things. And this front quarter is going to suck up quite a bit, quite a bit of creek because it's so thick. We don't typically put bricks under wire like that when we we have these metal these metal things we call slab bolsters when we want to 
hold the wire up off styrofoam but those guys that's just the way they prepped it and that's the way they wanted it done so we're trying to pull it up a little bit as we go with our hand here especially where it's really thick we got fiber mesh in the concrete too guys so there's there's actually a double reinforcement in there where they got the wire and the fiber mesh to help out but being this thick inside a frost wall like this i mean this floor is, isn't going anywhere especially if they did the the sub base the gravel prep right you know and they compacted it really good which they did i saw it before they put the styrofoam down it's just not going to go anywhere we'll saw after we get done power trial we'll saw a couple expansion joints too one down the middle each way to help control any random cracks so uh I mean the reinforcement is it's basically just in there as a as an insurance just to help hold things together if if something does want to crack we don't typically have any problem with these with these floors cracking though especially if we saw the same day we got about 90 percent of the concrete in there that we needed we always leave a little low spot in case we're high so we can pull that high into the low spot and not have to shovel it all out and then we get our edges floated up again. We got a 14 foot screed we're using, so and this is 24, 24, so we only really need that one pad in the middle. Now I'm gonna check the form with the laser too on the front. Right now I'm digging out a little bit of dirt, a little bit of backfill so I can get that form straight. We got a string across that, that front form just to make sure it stays straight. It was kicked in a little bit because it was so thick right there. So I, I needed to kick it out about three-eighths of an inch, so I'm just digging out a little bit of dirt behind it to get it nice and straight. And now I'm just going to double check, make sure that that form is, is right perfect and the center of it is perfect. We don't want a little hump or a dip right where the garage door is going to shut down. What I found was when I shot both ends of that form was one end was a quarter of an inch different than the other. So we're matching, we're picking one side, matching that, and then that's where I'm shooting over there for Luke to match that other side. And that's what he's doing so we can have that perfectly, perfectly level across where that door is going to sit. And then I'm checking the middle to make sure that's good. The middle of the form was actually about an eighth of an inch high. So the concrete right there is going to be down about an eighth of an inch from the top of the form. When we don't set our own forms, I you always got to double check. You know, it's just we're we're pretty fussy with how our floors go, and we don't want to have to come back later and grind something down just because we didn't check it. So it only takes a second to check it while you're pouring. So they're going to shrink up that bay a little bit. Then we're going to just check across the form still with the screed because that screed is, is right on. And if there was anything there we had, to, we had to fix, that screed would tell you. Now they'll just finish up that bay, bring it right down, then they'll turn it and come right out. And then we're going to show you how we do this with that back entry. We've got a 5 foot by 8 foot entry that we couldn't reach with the chutes on the truck. So we're going to show you how we reached that and got that poured also. A little bit cloudy out today. The sun's not really the sun's not really beating through the clouds as it's rising. It's, it, you know, even when it's this cold, if it's not too windy, if the sun comes up, it doesn't feel too bad out. You can see the actual screed time on a floor like this is very, very little. It might be five or six minutes that they actually spend screeding a floor like this. It's more in you know, dumping the concrete out, getting it, getting it pushed around, getting your edges floated. And then when you know what you're doing screeding, it doesn't take that long. So we got right down to the very end. We had to pull out just a little bit of concrete. We're going to get that pulled out. And then we're going to back that, that truck. We're going to move that truck over a little bit, back him up as, as far as we can, as close as we can to the, to the front of that garage. And then we're going to show you what we had to do to reach that little 5 foot by 8 foot piece. If you guys haven't subscribed already, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Also, if you like these types of videos, you know, please smash that like button. The more you guys like the videos, 
the more YouTube is uh, going to recommend them to other people, which will help other people too. So I'd appreciate that. So now we talk. That's the first driver still there. Just he he kind of likes to talk. So <laughs> he hung around for a little bit, and then uh, we're telling the second driver. And you can see I'm double checking that middle there just to make sure that garage is perfect. But we're telling the second driver, okay, I got to set you over a few feet. And then we got to back you up just as tight as we can to that front form so we can reach that back piece. And that's what he had to do right there. So he actually has a, you can see we had to hook a 12 foot chute on there just to reach that back piece. And the reason we didn't do that first was because that slab was so thick in the front, you know, when we, when we calculate the concrete and order it, we try to calculate it as close as we can and not have to waste too much. So when I calculated, you know, I think I, I told him either 11 or 11 and a half yards, I did add a little extra, but you still, it's, you still, I didn't add a ton extra, maybe, maybe half a yard extra. With it being that thick in the front, you just want to be safe. If we did run out, I don't want to run out in the garage slab. I'd rather run out in that little tiny piece there. But it all worked out okay. We had plenty of concrete. Luke's scraping the chute down the best he can, so when... He pulls ahead and washes out. He doesn't have a lot of concrete left in the chute. The 5x8 area back there on the left where Darren's standing is going to actually be the entryway to the house. And they're going to end up putting stone over that. Some type of flagstone or bluestone or something. So we just needed to kind of pour the base for it and match the top of the wall. The house in behind there where where you can't see and behind Darren and, and the driver and loop there's a big house in behind there. it's probably probably 2,000 square feet all uh, it's got a foundation a walkout basement around it we haven't done the floor in there yet that one's kind of frozen still so they haven't prepped that one well, I don't know when we're gonna do that we might wait till they build the house and come back and do it after they heat it so there's the 12 foot chute that just you know that saves us from having to use a conveyor or a pump in a lot of situations I know a lot of you guys don't even have conveyor trucks like we do so you don't even have that choice and I don't you know what would you do to reach that would you wheelbarrow it would you build a chute or would you just would you just pump this thing you know let me know down in the comments now Darren's just gonna float in the edges we got a five foot screed we're gonna use just to screed that off top of the wall and then uh, we'll get that just magged out nice and smooth and that'll all we have to do in that. So the garage slab, like I said, we're going to power trowel this. It will dry pretty good with all that styrofoam under it. It's got four inches of styrofoam under it, so that's going to help hold some of the heat in the floor. And it's not going to cool off too fast. So between that, the water reducer, the accelerator, the hot water, the, the concrete floor, will end up being all done power trowel and sawed by about three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, after after starting at 6.30 in the morning with 15 degrees, it it's gonna end up warming up into the low 30s today. And if the sun comes out, that'll even help more. So that's how we pour a garage floor with a two and a half inch slope in the winter guys in the 15 degree weather freezing cold weather um, you can still get concrete done if it's prepped right if you plan for it and if you know what you're doing so again if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead down and hit subscribe thanks for watching come on back we'll see you on the next one